Civilization 6 or Civ 6 is a very interesting and detailed Forex strategy game and in this video I'm going to deliver some early game tips. These are tips around frequent mistakes that I see people make in Civ 6 when they're trying to surge toward victory and it doesn't actually matter what victory you're aiming for because in this video the tips will be generic enough that you can apply them to any setting but also nuanced enough that both beginners looking for a beginner's guide and experienced Civ 6 players should feel right at home. Let's jump in. First up, I want to talk about early build order because there are a lot of mistakes that are made around early build order in Civilization 6. One of the things that I think it's really tempting to do for me as an experienced Civilization 5 player, and likely for many of you when you're looking at this tech tree, is to think, all right, beeline writing, get my science, get the victory. Go, 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 go. What you might want to consider and what I'm considering here in this gameplay is actually, is that the best use of my time? The answer is often no. Too often players be lying towards science, towards writing, to grab the campus, and they don't consider maybe they want bronze working to be able to clear features. Maybe they want mining to clear forests and chop production before they go through pottery and writing. Maybe you want masonry if you have a lot of stone. The point here is don't be line science. What do I suggest instead? Well, chances are you're not gonna have a great spot for a campus even if you beeline it. Unless of course you do, that's a niche example. What I would suggest instead is you do what I'm doing here. Focus on your firstly monument for your culture. Secondly, or maybe first, depending on your order, you wanna get some units. Right, like I'm doing here, scouting out with my scout and defending myself with my warrior. Two may not be enough. You might need three or four. This will help early rushes if you want to take them later. But of course, more crucially, defend your city's improvements and settlers and other vulnerable units against barbarian attacks. Then move through to grabbing your settlers and builders and your government plaza. That one is crucial for future growth. And it will relate back to some of the tips that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, but just don't forget that ancestral hall and the government plaza is your friend to producing cities early. And the one thing we know about Civilization VI is that it favors a wide gameplay style. So tips, tricks, and strategy all you like, but I suggest you try and play a little bit wide and hopefully reflecting on that build order. And crucially, and the one takeaway from this part is don't just beeline campus because science equals good. You might be better off focusing at home first, building up your defenses. Let's move through actually and build on that a little bit more with my second tip. It's around choosing tech for big wins. It's a quicker one, but I do want to highlight it because it relates to the first point. Choosing tech for big wins is what you should be focusing on in the early game. I really like mining for improvements. Next technologies after it as well. Like I say, you get those encampments, you get those extra resources that you're able to harvest and that is crucial. It is absolutely crucial that you go mining through into its next technologies. You don't necessarily have to do it first, but having that online is fundamental for when you move through into that second stage that I just talked about, about building your settlers and expanding. This will happen relatively quickly in a matter of tens of turns. You'll move from building up your early units, scouts and defenses through to getting those builders and settlers online, which is often why I say it can be more beneficial to choose those useful uh, utility technologies before you beeline into a campus that otherwise might not be very useful. My key tip here is to focus on mining and improvements as you move through into layer two of your plan. Speaking of your plan, layer three involves governors. Governors are vital to building up your cities, holding loyalty, but also providing those crucial improvements. The common ones that come forward in the early to mid game are Liang, Pingala and Magnus, and all of them have their own unique benefits. There's no doubt that Pingala provides early game science and culture like no other, and that might be right for you. Don't sleep on picking Pingala first. What I prefer to do, and sometimes I get called out about this when I'm playing Civ 6 on Twitch or even just playing it on YouTube, is choosing Magnus first. This is probably a video all of its own right. But what you need to know about Magnus and the mistake that I see people make when they take Pingala is that again, they're not focusing enough on living that sweet early game experience, right? 
Not just what I'm doing here, which is scouting, finding locations for new cities, starting to build some improvement, or chop some resources as that ability for me comes online. What's more important though is how these people, the governors, fit into the equation. I believe, not always but often, a Magnus pick will serve you better for a few key reasons. Firstly, chopping yields. Civilization 6 players know, in particularly more than any other Civ game in the past, that using a builder to chop forests, we'll talk more about that later on some advanced chopping tricks, not just the basic chop the forest to get industry, but in a nutshell, chop forests or clear improvements to provide boosts of that resource, the respective resource, to your city. Generally this is useful to surge production, but you can also surge food for population, that kind of thing. The point here is that Magnus really enables this strategy to go from something that is good and useful, chopping a couple of forests to finish a wonder, maybe you go for a cheeky early pyramids play like I'm trying to set up here, I don't know. But what's more important about Magnus is that he increases those chopped yields. As you promote him, he'll provide more food to your cities as well, enabling further growth. No population loss from settlers is where Magnus really shines. You won't lose one population every time you build a settler. This helps you layer up through and really surge both your builder and settler production to help you fan out wide and land grab. Crucial to any early game setup in any civilization game, but particularly in Civ 6, where playing wide and land grabbing is so important. As you move through to the late game, I argue that Magnus becomes even more powerful. Of course, Pingala and Liang are just as strong in other ways. I think that Magnus's key strength uh, in, through into the late game is really in those industrial district synergies. It's not the focus of this video, but it's always important to remember, when you're setting up this early game, you're setting it up for a reason. You're setting it up because you're going to want to use it later. Don't forget, Magnus has some very powerful abilities later in the game that can snowball and share industry and help you with your space projects too if you're looking to complete a space victory. That's all that I'm going to touch on on Governors in this video, but please do let me know. I read all the comments. Please leave a comment below if you'd like to hear more about Governors and more of an in-depth breakdown. It's something I've been working on for a little while and sort of reading and thinking about. If you'd like to see that, let me know. Let's move through into my next early game tip, and that's around ages and targets. This is a two for one, if you will, but it's related and you'll see why. As you move through eras in Civ 6, you change, uh, potentially, significantly. If you've gone from a golden age down to a dark age, or you're just floating along as a normie, either way, the impacts of the ages impact your stability on your empire if you're trying to hold together a fractured empire, but also a lot more than that. It is crucial that you think about the ages, but also that you monitor what age your opponent is in. And this is why this tip is a double whammy. If your opponent is in the dark ages or is experiencing a dark age, they will be more vulnerable and more susceptible to attack, whether it's a passive attack through loyalty or more of a direct attack using those units that you built up in the early game and maybe a couple of others around the edges too. Important thing here to remember is that when an opponent is in a dark age, they are susceptible to attack just as you are. Don't forget, this goes both ways. However, an opponent in a dark age is particularly weak, but that's not the only way that could make an opponent weak. City states are weaker, but are they really worth you attacking? Eh, maybe. Opponents nearby could also be weak as well. And I know that not every Civ player is interested in early wars, particularly before you have siege equipment online, it can be difficult to break down walls. But an opponent that moves late to building their walls on their cities is potentially another early grab. Something to think about as you're expanding and growing, because don't forget that your Pingala, or, or more appropriately your Magnus growth strategy, may not play out if you're being attacked. You've got your first line of defense with your units, they're ready to defend you. The second thing to remember though is just susceptible cities without walls are weak. Use that to your advantage too. Strike your opponents if they feel weak. The other thing that I would add to this tip, this sort of combined ages and targets tip, is about using your unique ability when it features. If you're playing a Civ with an early game unit, you should try and take advantage of that, okay?
If you're playing a Civ that has a really powerful early game unit that cannot be contested by anything else in class, do capitalize on that power because you won't experience an unfair advantage like that again potentially for the rest of the game. So don't sleep on your early game unique units in particular because once they're gone, they are sadly gone. My last tip here, a slightly more advanced tip, but I want to talk about cities. Pummeling production into cities and crucially using chopping or more specifically and broadly resource extraction because it doesn't just have to be a forest that could be chopped. Uh, although most of these tips will focus on that, it could also be food sources, for example, that could be chopped and sent to, to a city. But for now, we're going to talk about how can we surge industry into our cities using workers and other related benefits? First and foremost, chopping advice number one. If you have hills and they have forests, they're probably a good chop. If tiles are outside of your workable zone, that's three tiles from a city centre, they're probably a good chop. If tiles are future sites of wonders or districts, if you're planning on placing that holy site down, Maybe that campus is going somewhere where a forest already is. Or perhaps there's a rice field in the way of your ideal theatre district location. Regardless, chop them and chop them soon. Okay? Chop them as soon as you can. Why not? Surge out that industry. Surge out that extra production and complete your early game constructions. And without getting too deep on the mathematics, because that's also actually not particularly my strong suit, Industry earned early is more powerful than any production earned later on. If you can chop a forest and send 50 production into your city and that produces you a settler, that is fantastic and you should do that. Because chopping that 50 production now and getting that settler, the snowball butterfly effect of that is much greater than waiting 50 turns until it actually comes time to place your campus. By then, you've missed the real power of chopping the forest. So do it quickly and do it in those situations that I've already covered. Outside of your radius, where a district is going, forested hills in particular, but even just any old woods could provide you with a much more powerful impact with that surge of industry than they will later on in the piece. Something to think about. The relative power and the exponential power of getting things online early cannot be understated. Lastly, of course, play to your strengths here. Play to your strengths. If you have a lot of mines, you might be building a lot more. If there's an area that really isn't suited to building a lot of farms, if it's surrounded by, <laughs> I don't know, let's say a whole lot of quarries, right? And then there's one rice field like this one here. I might be better off to actually just clear that rice, send people into the city and focus on industry or a theatre district maybe, seeing as it's built near my pyramids. The point here is play to your strengths, play to your advantages, and don't be afraid to cut a few losses, i.e. losing one source of a, a resource, let's say a foodie resource, in exchange for two gold per turn down the line. Does that really matter? Would you rather have the three populations here quickly so that you can get Magnus's provisions and pump out settlers? You probably would. It's important to keep that in mind, that mindset as you move through Civilization VI and hopefully take advantage of the tips and tricks that I've covered in this video. Towards the end, let's recap here and think about how they all relate together. In this video, we've talked about not just beelining for science. Do not just beeline that campus super early on. There's probably better things you can build, namely your units, your monument, and setting up for that exponential growth expansion phase using the government plaza and the ancestral hall. Next up, of course, we want to choose technologies that can help us with this. Mining, for example, for improvements and clearing tiles could be really powerful and there are flow on effects from that as well as you move through into the technologies that follow to get your quarries online or whatever it may be. Governors are crucial and Magnus will be your key kingpin player here. Of course, there are always exceptions and cases where Pingala may be a better pick if you want to surge culture or science. Next up, assess your targets. Find weak foes and use these units and use this growth to your advantage. If there's a weak enemy on your borders, you may wish to expand towards them. They're in a dark age. You don't need to worry as much about their loyalty impacts, for example. And lastly, chop smarter and chop faster. Early yields are good yields. Grab them, capitalize on them, and you will be able to build 
a wonderful empire. Thank you very much for joining me in today's Civilization VI tutorial. This has been not just a beginner's guide, but hopefully a video that all players can enjoy. If you did enjoy it, I would love some support here on the channel. All like ratings and subscriptions are greatly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.